Do you ever worry about your sourdough starter when you're planning a vacation? If you do, trust me, you are not alone. So whether you're about to head to a bustling city or to a beach resort, in this video, I'm gonna show you how I prepare my starter for my vacations and how I revive it when I get back. It is actually 12.30 a.m. right now. Take a look. I totally should be in bed, but part of my packing list is to feed the starter. I'm gonna show you the four steps I take when I get my starter ready for its cold vacation in the fridge. The first is feeding the starter. The second is allowing it to rise overnight. The third, refrigeration. And the fourth, of course, revival. I've got my starter here. What the f Ah, whatever, let's just get started. We're gonna start by placing about three grams into the jar. We're gonna do a three to 5% inoculation and 100% hydration starter. So that would be three grams to five grams of starter, 100 grams of total flour, and 100 grams of total water. The next thing I'm gonna add is the water to 100 grams. Oh, 101. And for the flour, I like to use a little bit of rye flour. So we're gonna use about 20 grams of rye. There's 10. I'm not really too particular about this. If it goes over, that's fine. And now for the rest of the flour, I'm going to use some strong bread flour. I'm using a filtered cold room temperature water. Uh, that doesn't make sense. We want the total flour to be 100. Next, you're just gonna mix this up. Give it a really strong mix. Scrape down the sides. Get everything into the center. I'm gonna be leaving the starter on the counter overnight to rise and tomorrow morning placing it in the fridge. Good morning. The last thing I should probably be doing right now is making a video, but I wanted to show you that we're gonna place this starter in the fridge right now. It has risen overnight. It looks like it's starting to get bubbly. It hasn't quite reached what I would call its peak, but that's just perfect. The fridge is gonna slow down fermentation and give our starter a cool vacation while I'm on a warm vacation. While I'm away and while the starter's in the fridge, let's talk about three myths surrounding sourdough. While my sourdough starter is having a nice, cool vacation, I'm in really hot Ho Chi Minh City, Vietnam, having my vacation. Myth number one, sourdough bread is difficult to make. Trust me, I know the process seems overwhelming and a little bit intimidating when you first start, but it's like anything. Baking is a craft. You have to put in a little bit of work. A lot of people expect immediate results because of what you see on social media and on the internet, but it does take a little bit of practice and a little bit of repetition. Anyone can pick it up. There's plenty of free resources on my YouTube channel, my blog, and many other amazing bakers out there sharing guides, tips, and tricks. So don't give up at first, stick with it, and you'll be an expert in no time. If you really wanna up your game, check out my digital course on how you can make sourdough bread in the comfort of your own home, my sourdough pizza course, or if you're really feeling adventurous, my sourdough panettone course. For now, I'm gonna enjoy this nuke soy, which is a typical drink from Hanoi in the north of Vietnam, and of course, the wonderful view. I'm out here in the beautiful Mekong Delta. We're about to head out to the last floating market in Vietnam. And before we do, let's talk quickly about sourdough myth number two. You need a special sourdough starter to make sourdough bread. Now, often you hear stories of the 100-year-old starter or a starter someone brought back from a certain part of France, Italy, or especially San Francisco, but it's just not true. All you need is flour and water to get started. While there are many strains of wild yeast out there and it can be fun to play around with different ones, all you need to get started is flour and water. I found you can make just as good a bread with a 10 day old starter as a 100 year old starter. The key to keeping your sourdough starter healthy is to maintain the right temperature and hydration. You can maintain a stiff starter, a liquid starter, 100% hydration starter. You just need to find what works best for you. With a little patience and practice, anyone can make delicious sourdough bread at home from anywhere in the world.
If you're struggling with how to maintain your starter after you've got it active, I'll leave a link in the description below as to how I've fed and maintained my starter for almost 20 years. I know, right? I think I've got about 10 minutes before the boat picks me up. I gotta run and soon we'll talk about myth number three. All right, I'm on an island in the Mekong Delta and we're gonna talk about sourdough myth number three. Sourdough is time consuming. While it can take a few days to make a really good loaf of bread, the actual hands-on time isn't that much. Using techniques like cold fermentation allows you to go to work, play with your kids, do whatever you want while the dough ferments in the fridge and you can bake it whenever you're ready. To help you out, I've created some dough schedules with all my recipes on the website to give you sample guides as to when to start and finish the process. Now, I've gotta go have some lunch before I head back to Ho Chi Minh City for my last night in Vietnam. Then, we're going back to Canada and I'm gonna show you how to revive your sourdough starter. All right, so as you can see, I've already revived my starter. I keep it in a plastic container here, just in a Cambro. And I'm gonna show you how to go from this to this. And then if you watch my other videos, to this. We're gonna start by taking a little bit of our starter. So you don't want this liquid that's in the back here. You want from here. And I'm gonna place in the jar a big spoonful. So we have about, we're gonna aim for about 20 grams. Maybe a little bit more, a little bit less. And so I've got 25 grams, that's fine. I'm now gonna put 50 grams of warm water this water is 30 degrees Celsius. And we're gonna put 50 grams of rye flour. Rye tends to ferment a little better and it's a really great way to get your starter back in action. If you don't have rye, you can also just use your regular bread or all-purpose flour, but I prefer rye. Put everything in the jar. We're gonna mix it up. Now we're not doing a lot here because I don't want to create waste and this first feed will not be usable for the bread. Mix this up really well. If you have a handy proofer or sourdough home, I recommend using it. If not, you can use your oven with the light on or a microwave with some warm water, an insulated cooler, but you really want this to be somewhere warm. It's actually summer and it's pretty warm outside, so I could just stick this outside if I wanted to. So that's it for the first step. Put a lid, and we're gonna place this into my proofer. I've got it set for 30 degrees Celsius. We're gonna let that sit for about eight to 10 hours, and we will check it tonight. All right, time to check our sourdough starter. It's been just over seven and a half hours. Um, I didn't leave it the full 10, but it's getting late and I wanna to go to bed. And admittedly, because I'm using the proofer, it's probably a bit closer. So if you're not using a proofer, you could probably go a bit longer, 10 hours. But what we're looking for is some bubbles in here. It definitely smells fermented, it's risen, and it's ready for our next feed. We're gonna give this a feed, leave it overnight, and by the morning, we should be back to normal and basically ready to make bread again with. All right, so now what we're gonna do is take a little bit of this, about 15 grams, roughly a tablespoon, while there's 16, and then we're gonna add 150 grams of room temperature water, or this is just cold water from my tap, I guess, not room temperature. I'm using filtered water, a little bit over there. 150, close enough, 153. And then we're gonna add equal amount of flour, and I'm gonna use a bit of rye and a bit of bread flour. So we're gonna do about 35 grams of rye flour. And remember, we've got the rye from our starter still, so this is gonna be really super active. There's 35, 34, whatever. And I'm gonna just make the same weight of the... And I'll just do... And now I'll just do the same total weight of 152. Okay. Mix this up. Okay, give it a really good mix. Scrape down the sides. And now we're just gonna leave this at room temperature overnight. 
I'm gonna throw it up here. And in the morning, it should be risen and basically ready to go. Now we will have a little bit of discard, which is something I normally avoid. But in this case, a little bit's okay to get that starter really active and healthy. I want my first spread to be wonderful. And as it was, you saw earlier. So close this up and I'll get this cleaned up and I'll see you in the morning. We'll take a look at what our starter looks like. Good morning, bakers. Let's check out our sourdough starter. Look at that. It smells super right, nice and acidic. It's starting to recede, it's bubbly on top. I would say we are ready to make some bread with this. So if I wanted to, I could use this to do my regular build for bread. I could place this in the fridge to hold it for a few days, or I could just leave this out and feed it later today. Let's actually take a look at this starter and see what it looks like. Oh yeah, look at that. Thick, sticky, full of air. This is absolutely wonderful and definitely ready to make our bread with. Oh, oh, oh. 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 Come on. My shoes are soaked now.